Whoa. Look at what I just found. Oh, oh there's a oh, fish on, baby. Guys, welcome to another episode. I am currently out in the middle of the wilderness at a beautiful mountain lake. I've already been backpacking out here for about two hours to get to this lake. And this is not our final destination. We're actually gonna be climbing way up into those mountains that you can barely see in the clouds there. So we're probably gonna try and find a camping spot down here at this lake, maybe flick a lure a little bit, see if we can't catch us some dinner, maybe look for some mushrooms that we could cook up tonight with some fish. The next couple days are supposed to get really, really beautiful. And what that means is that I'm gonna have a weather window to get up to these higher lakes, which is gonna be higher than I think I've been in probably easily 18 years. But let's go ahead and first, before it gets completely dark, let's try and get back on the trail and do a little mushroom foraging sesh. All right, we've once again hit the total jackpot. We have in front of us hidden in the bushes, some wild mushrooms. See those little yellow spots down there? That's a chanterelle. They're gonna make just an absolute delicious little snack. They're some of my favorite mushrooms in the world. We're just gonna go in deep, cut them off right down on the stem. More meat to these little guys than uh, you'd think at first. Look at that. This is exciting, man, chanterelles. Look at that. Wild edible mushrooms. These are some of the best mushrooms in the world. Highly prized, very expensive at the grocery store, but we got them growing out here for free. Ooh, back here, Let, let's go check this out. Dude, I think there's more chanterelles right here. Oh, oh, the mother load of chanterelles. Let's just take one or two nice looking ones here. Oh yeah, now that's a chanterelle, man. It's just a gift of nature right there, look at that. Now, whenever you guys do have some wild mushrooms, just make sure you guys clean them up really good before you put them into your bag. Otherwise that dirt will just mush around in the mushrooms and it just gets all nasty and it's just harder to clean later. Here's another wild berry we can eat. And in one of the last videos, I showed you guys this and a few of you in the comments called me out. I called this a salmon berry and you're hundred percent right. It is not a salmon berry. This is a thimble berry. I don't know why I said salmon berry. Oh, oh, I was like really sweet. Ooh, look at this campsite. This is looking juicy. Little spot to put the tent. Maybe we'll put the tent under the trees though, just to stay out of the rain. And then we've got the beach right here. Check this out. Oh man, look at this beach that we have. Back here is a spot a little smaller, a little more cramped, not as pretty. And it's under these trees and that's gonna give me the shelter that I want tonight, just in case it rains some more. Now for safety, when you guys are setting up your tent under trees or anywhere near trees, just look around and make sure that there's no big dead trees around or big dead branches just hanging up there. All of these trees are healthy and alive. So this is gonna be our tent spot for the night. The way this tent works is it uses my trekking poles as the tent poles, thereby I can save a lot of uh, weight in my pack. There we go. There we go, we got our rain jacket on. Super important when you guys are out backpacking that you guys stay dry. That's one of the, the biggest things that'll make you cold. Everything set up, everything that needs to be in the tent. We've got in there now, backpack, sleeping bag. This thing right here, this is called a, a bear vault. And uh, this is what we're storing our food inside. It's actually a nice protector to make sure your food, food doesn't get mushed up like our mushrooms that we got in there now. Wow. Oh, there's a bunch of ducks out here. Look, there's a duck sitting right there. Hey, sorry, buddy. I feel so bad that I chased. Oh, the, all the ducks are flying away. Oh my, oh, geez. There's no logs right here, so I think if we fish right there, that should be pretty good. All right, here we go, baby. Bullet lure going out in the lake. Oh, 
Oh, oh, we just had a bite. Oh man, I should have set the hook maybe on it. That was a big fish. That was a big fish that just took a really good nibble at the lure. Oh. And they're quacking at us. That's awesome. Man, besides that one bite there right in the beginning, so far nothing. So I couldn't find a single natural bait anywhere. No bugs. He's had a bite on the bullet lure right there. All right, last cast. Well, no bites. It's getting dark too. So we're gonna call it for the night. But there is just a little bit of blue sky right up there. Tiny little hole in the clouds. It hasn't rained for the last half hour. So I'm really hoping that we have a dry night tonight. So I'm looking for a couple of natural fire starters. Everything has been rained on so it's a little damp but this right here it's called lichen it's essentially a fungus and an algae that grow together to make this stuff hanging off of trees when it's dry it's extremely flammable and a great fire starter let's get a little bit of tree sap on this lichen and that might help us start a fire Ooh, right there nice and runny get that in there there you go we got some tree sap crystals in the lichen let's see Probably like right here. We've got a few little branches here that seem dry. Everything is super damp. So wish me luck. We can do this together. You think we can get a fire started? We're just gonna use the lighter uh, that we've got with us. Here's a little trick for you if you don't already know. Wrap your lighter in duct tape. That way you've always got some duct tape with you and it doesn't take up any extra space. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, it's liking the sap. Let's get some little branches on. Ooh, it's smoky, it is so moist. Oh, the sap is like, <coughs> oh, it's super heavy. So what's happening down there right now is that that sap is providing a constant flame. It's essentially like wax, kind of like a candle that's constantly burning here right now. Start putting some thicker pieces of wood on there. Surround it with some more juicy stuff. Oh, it smells of camping and tears and eyes is what it smells like. <laughs> this fire is so warm. It feels amazing. This summer it's been really, really dry here in the Pacific Northwest. So we've actually had a burn ban for most of the summer, but that just got lifted because it started raining a bunch. what the smoke does is it keeps wildlife away. Generally, animals do not like uh, the smell or even the sight of fire. So if you're in an area that has a lot of bears or mountain lions like we are in right now, then it's nice to have a little fire going. All the smoke, it's, it's making me cry. Or is it the beauty of the fire that's making me cry? It's, oh, camping is so much more fun with a fire. Just remember guys, be safe about it and then it's all good. All right, since we did not catch any fish tonight, for food we have with us a US military MRE, a meal ready to eat. And this is menu 11, vegetable crumbles with pasta in taco style sauce. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yes, yes, this is one of my favorites. French vanilla cappuccino. And then I wanna say this here feels kind of like a squishy, mushy pouch. That's probably the main course. Applesauce, smoked almonds, that's kind of nice. Chunky peanut butter crackers. Th this is probably one of the worst crackers out there. We're gonna take the meal and stick it in here into this bag with the heater. It says here, do not overfill, but someone in the comments said it worked a little better if you put just a hair more water in. So, so we're just gonna lean it about right here all right so it's been probably 10 15 minutes that thing has not gotten warm whatsoever so i kind of set it closer to the fire so maybe some of that heat from the fire can kind of activate the heating elements in there this is really really hot like steamy 
hot. Again, let me know in the comments what your guys' experience is, especially with older MREs. Look at this little guy. <laughs> I think she's ready. That's just crazy how many of those little daddy long legs are crawling around here everywhere. By the way, if you've ever heard that weird rumor that a daddy long leg is the most poisonous spider in the world, but the only reason they're not dangerous is because their claws can't get through your skin, that's a lie. That, that That's completely a lie. Plus, they're actually not a spider. Just, just so you know. Let's look at this together. Oh, what is going on in there? What? It's like chili in there. Do they label that wrong? <laughs> mm. Wow, that's delicious. Doesn't taste weird at all. I mean, it almost tastes like a home cooked meal. Mm. Yes. For dessert, we're going to have the applesauce, or is it zapple sauce? I see one of the main ingredients is high fructose corn syrup. It's basically just a sugary, a very sweet applesauce. No, little spider, don't run into the fire. But he was about to run into the, the fire, so we're gonna rescue him. A very sweet dessert, if I may say so. All right. We're in the tent. Oh, freedom. Freedom from the boot. So I got a new sleeping bag. This guy here, it's a mountain of hardware. Right now it's getting super cold here in the mountains, close to freezing. So this guy here uh, can keep me protected down to 15 degrees. Comfort level is around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can't wait to slip into that baby tonight. It'd be nice and warm. Oh. I can already tell the sleeping bag is so much puffier than my old one. That's nice too, it weighs about the same, but it has like twice the the insulation. Oh man, I'm tired. All right, I'm gonna need some rest for the climb tomorrow. There we go. I'll see you guys in the morning. Guys, last night was rather interesting. It's a beautiful day out now, as you can see. Oh, squirrel. Oh, squirrel, he heard us. He's like, someone's in my, in my woods. My air mattress went flat. Check this out. So I've just been sleeping on the ground, basically. Oh. Sleeping on your side on the ground, not so fun. So if your air mattress ever does pop and you're a side sleeper, just lay on your back. That was a lot better. Not worried about it though. Sun's shining. Super happy about it. Let's go ahead and get out and make some, some mountain coffee. Here we go. That's our water filter right there. With this, we can purify any water that we encounter in the wild. Mm. While that water heats up, we're just gonna go and collect a few wild berries. I noticed that there's wild blueberries growing over here called huckleberries. Look at that, there's a little berry right there. Not that many, not that many, but oh, look at that. Well, not that many more berries left. We got a few in the jar here, a couple more. Oh yeah, right here I've got strawberries and cream oatmeal. 
There we go, just a little bit. I'll set this baby aside for a second. And then I got with us just a little bit of, a little bit of instant coffee. <laughs> we'll shake that baby in there. There's a little squirrel right here, right there in the tree. What's up, buddy? Oh, there he is. He's angry. Look at that. Here's a bite with a berry right there. So what this here is, is a waterproof uh, compression sack for your sleeping bag. That way it stays nice and dry in case it rains or it falls in the water. As you can see with these straps, you can kind of compress it down to take up less space in your backpack. Remember, always hydrate as much as you can in the mountains. Up top, what I carry is my water filter, my medikit, and uh, just the, the big camera in case we see something crazy. I know a lot of you guys always ask, kind of, what do I carry with me? I'm not going to go through the entire pack because that would take a long time. You always want to carry a manual map with you. Don't just rely on your phone. Spare paracord. I've got a huge coil of paracord uh, down in the side pocket as well. A little bit of accessories like towelettes, uh, some TP, <laughs> and all sorts of random stuff. My fishing license and driver's license, of course. Right here, hand warmers. Believe me, you are going to so not regret carrying up a couple of hand warmers because you can just shake those babies up, tuck them in your sleeping bag, and you'll sleep like a little baby. Anyways, that's I carry like a big compass in there too. Right here, this is a satellite uh, phone. I could send an SOS or I could message people uh, at home because in these areas that I go to, there is zero reception out here. So your phones are not gonna work. Little whistle in case you see bears or something like that. And then I carry a second little compass. Of course, we've got our two fishing poles, little net, more cameras. And then I've got a huge camera bag inside there with all my batteries. I've got a solar charger with me. I always have uh, self-defense protection with me as well. The sleeping bag, the tent, and that kind of starts summing it up. I'll leave a link below to the 10 essentials that you always need with you no matter what. Beyond that, you can kind of build your kit depending on your, your specific needs and your mission and what you're gonna be out doing. Goodbye, beautiful lake. We will see you on the way back. I got started just a little bit late on this whole backpacking trip because on the way here, I stopped by a river where currently sockeye salmon are coming up from the ocean to spawn. And they were just everywhere in the creek, so I just had to go down and say hi to them. Got some sweet underwater footage of these magnificent, beautiful fish. Yeah, so I'll roll in those clips for you guys. Yeah, I'm just fortunate to live in an area that has the mountains like this and wild salmon and all the green around me. We've been going up the mountain. Some really steep stuff. I haven't even really been filming just because I've been climbing. <sighs> Dude, that feels so good. So I just came across a mushroom on the trail here that looks very interesting. Because I don't know what it is, I'm not gonna keep any. So we're just gonna cut off one for identification and we'll leave the rest. Oh, it smells so good. It doesn't look like a trumpet mushroom. This hurts, but I'm not 100% sure what it is. If in doubt, don't eat it.
buy delicious looking mushrooms. So I'm just gonna drink as much water as I can and refill here. This is the last stop with water before we get up to the lakes. up there that is not happy oh, look at what I just found guys it's a King Bolit oh it's a perfect size we're gonna twist them and bring them oh oh look at this little Bolit oh, this is one of the best eating mushrooms in the world oh beautiful oh sweet goodness Another baby bolete. Oh. So we've already got plenty to eat up on the mountain. There's one more little guy right here that we're just gonna let him grow. And then on the way back down, I'll take a look at him and see how big he is then. And maybe I'll take him home. Two beautiful king bolets. Oh, they smell so good already. And we don't wanna cut the whole stem off, just, just the dirt itself. That's a perfectly cleaned, delicious little king bolete. So that was, an amazing find. I can't get so distracted by all this mushroom foraging down here because we still gotta climb up this mountain. Uh, if you guys are looking for a really good King Belit recipe, don't cook them fresh. Instead, slice them super thin and dry them. You can dry them in the sun or kind of at a low temp in the oven. Once they're totally dry, they develop a heavenly flavor and just use them in like creamy pasta sauces. There are so many mushrooms here everywhere right now. This is ridiculous. Oh man, look at this. What? Ah, and this is still not the worst part. This is just the warm up. That's where we just came from. You gotta love it. Sometimes you wonder why though. We're starting to get on level with a lot of those peaks up there. There's a glacier over on the other side. <laughs> it's beautiful. These berry bushes here still have a few last berries on them. Super important that while you're climbing mountains like this to just keep your energy up. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, very unique, pleasant flavor from the red bushed huckleberries. Wow. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Check out the huge peaks back there. There's a giant glacier up on those mountains and we are headed right up there. It's beautiful, but exhausting. We're also getting higher up in altitude. So the oxygen in the air is getting thinner and thinner. Remember, no one's running up the mountain. Just a couple steps at a time and you'll get there. There's a fish swimming around down there. Literally, I'm watching a little trout swim right there. And why don't we try and fish this little pond here? Oh, that's crazy. What a weird little, like an alpine, itty bitty alpine pond. This is beautiful. Look at that. Since I just saw a little fish swimming right here, let's get our gear ready. We could fish right off of this rock. This is looking really juicy. Oh, man, my sunglasses just broke. So we're gonna have to fix those. Just totally snapped off. Dang it. All right, let's see what happens here. I had first cast in this baby. Oh, we had a bite, we had a bite. They followed it right, right up front, right up front on the first cast. He was a decent size too. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. Oh, there he is, oh, he, he bit it right there, he bit it right there. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw that though. All right, I grabbed a net here, I think this 
spot warrants a net. Ooh, there we go. We're getting one on this one. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, there you go. Fish on, baby. Fish on. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Our boat flip. Oh, in the net. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Oh my goodness. Look at the colors of this fish. Oh, it's a beautiful west slope cutthroat. All right, let's release him. That fish was beautiful, but I saw like three or four of them dart after the bullet lure, so I didn't want to just keep the first one. I think I saw a bigger one down there. So let's keep seeing if we can maybe, maybe get a big one for uh, kind of a late lunch slash dinner. All right, they seem to be kind of hiding against the shoreline here is where that one came from. Oh, we've already got to follow, 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 follow. Oh, oh they didn't hit it, didn't hit it. Now let's give those a break and see if there's anything living between those rocks there. Oh, there we go, fish on right in front of us. Right in front, that's a better one. This is a good one, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> that was a total, that, that, that was a show, that was a show. That's a, oh, guys, we might've just caught us late lunch. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I just can't get over it. Look at that beautiful cutthroat. Could not resist the bullet lure. This guy's dinner. Beautiful fish. We're just going to put him to sleep right away so he's no longer suffering. And he is out. Not huge, but eater size. West Slope cutthroat trout. Thank you, buddy. It's perfectly fine to harvest animals. We just need to make sure that we can Try and minimize the suffering. <sighs> Let's cook him up. I can't resist, but just take another cast here just to see what happens. What if there's a monster in this pond? Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> that's a fish. <laughs> All right. Little guy, little guy. We're going to let him go. Tell it my hands are not wet, so we're not going to handle him. We're just gonna drop him straight down in the water. There we go, and he's off. What about along the shore here again? That seems to be where most of them so far have been. <gasps> follow, 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 and bite! Oh, we lost him. <laughs> he came right off, didn't hook up. Oh my goodness. That was interesting, he followed on the fast retrieve, but on the slow, I kind of slowed down and then he hit it. So let's try maybe a really slow retrieve here and see what happens. Oh, there we go. That's a fish. Fish on, baby. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jumper. <laughs> He's kind of just twisting around. He's another little guy. Another little guy. We might have retained the biggest in this lake here. And he's off. <laughs> he's out of here. All right. One more cast. One more cast. One more cast. This is just insane. Trout on every cast. Oh, not on that one, right as I say it. Oh, right in front of us. Right in front of us. <laughs> oh man, he took it right there. Oh, he's cute. He is cute. Look at him. But you can go right back in. There you go, buddy. Oh my goodness. Bro, there's, there's birds. There's a little bird right here and I think he's kind of curious about what's going on. Hey. Here, you can have this. Ah, ah hey, leave my mushrooms, leave my mushrooms. Here, take this instead. Here, you want this, buddy? Come here. Yeah, there you go, take that. Leave my mushrooms alone. I don't want any trouble with you guys. Here you go, buddy. There you go. Come here, I know you want it. D 
Dude, you are so greedy. Leave some for your friends. There's another one on top of the camera. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? He's like sitting on my fish. Get off of there. All you birds have a great evening. That was cool though. What do you guys think about the thumbnail? Bird sitting on top of the fish? That was awesome. They did steal the king belief though. That was kind of a bummer. All right, let's go ahead and just clean our catch here real quick. Always start right at the butthole. Just cut your way up. Ooh, full belly on this little guy. Always curious to see what they've been eating. Huh? I don't know, black mush. Probably a bunch of little bugs or something is what this guy here has been been gobbling on. I'm just gonna take the head off and rip the head and all the guts come right with it. And what we'll do is we will put the guts and the head right back into the lake there. That way it doesn't attract bears and other creatures to the shorelines and all the nutrients are right back where they came from. Next thing we're gonna do is just score the kidney back there. And just push the kidney right out. There we go. It's a beautiful, clean cutthroat trout. Time to cook up some fish, and this fish is going to be well deserved. There we go. In the pan she goes. And then I have a handful of delicious chanterelles that we're just gonna cut up. Oh man, sizzle those babies in some butter. <laughs> Goodbye, son. Goodbye, and, and she's gone. We will see you again tomorrow. And we got our trout right here. I don't know if it's all gonna fit. In the pan it goes with the, the chanterelles. This is getting really exciting. So I only threw chanterelles in this one here. We'll probably save the king bolites uh, for tomorrow when we get up to the higher lakes, do the little flip. We almost forgot the main ingredient. We gotta get in our sweet Danish sea salt. Just a little, little sprinkle. Look at the thickness of those crystals. They are massive salt crystals. We're gonna let that steam up in there a tad. My goodness. Oh, it's looking beautiful. Oh, it smells so good. A little bit of skin. Some fin action. Oh, crispy fins, dude. You know what? I think the trout is probably done. Let's see if it comes off the bones. I think so. Wow, look at this. That's how you know a trout's done right there. Falls right off the bones. Pin bones and everything stayed right on here right back down into the pond. All right, all we're gonna do now is take a tortilla and we're gonna throw it in the pan. Usually I would do cheese down in the pan first and stuff, but this pan is not very happy with that. It sticks. So instead we're going to just steam some of this cheese on top of the tortilla, turn it way down, and that cheese and the tortilla are just gonna melt together. <sighs> Let's check back in a minute. You already know it, we're gonna cut one slice of a delicious avocado. One slice of avocado right there. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. Oh, it is perfect. You just can't beat cooking your food that you just caught right here with a view like that. I'm seeing fish rise down there in the water everywhere. Ooh, I'm seeing one swim at the surface right down there.
Ooh, look at the color of that cutthroat. It is just beautiful. The red uh, belly is still showing. Let's try that trout tail. Mm. Could have gotten a little crispier. Mm. Ooh, very interesting. I haven't had a West Slope cutthroat in a while. Let's get the mushrooms on here. Throw on the avocado here. There we go. Let's try just one of the chanterelles. <laughs> oh, super earthy, but good. Look at that. <laughs> Another beautiful lake behind me. That we'll fish in the next episode. This is video's already gotten long enough. Now let's dig into this baby. I've never had chanterelles in one of the fish wraps before. Honestly, that's one of the best flavor combinations I think I've ever tasted. Cheers. That one's to you guys for, for joining on this adventure. <laughs> I'm seeing fish surface down there right now. Now, just imagine what kind of monsters could be maybe lurking in that mountain lake if that little pond already had so many trout in it. But we're going to find out in the next episode because I got to find like a spot to set up camp here now. We'll leave off here, start there in the next episode. I love you. Thank you for watching as always. Drop a like, leave a comment. I love reading them. Subscribe if you're brand new. And we'll see y'all for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby.